Today we're going to be demonstrating a cervical x-ray. The routine views that we do for a cervical are a lateral, AP, and both obliques. There are additional views that we are going to be demonstrating and we'll do that at a later time. First we're going to have a patient put a shield on. We're going to be starting with the lateral view. So I'm going to actually turn the uh, shield to the side. I'm going to have the patient face the wall there. And this patient has a necklace on. Uh, real world applications, we would have the patient to take this, uh, this off. We're going to have the patient step forward here just a little bit. Now, as far as uh, our SID needs to be for the lateral, it needs to be 72 inches because we're trying to decrease the, the magnification of the cervical, the distance between the shoulder and the neck there helps to reduce the OID uh, by using uh, a, a 72 inch SID. Our film size is going to be a 10 by 12. It will be lengthwise. Our technical factors for the, the lateral will be 77 to 81, uh, automatic exposure control, center cell. So we're gonna have the patient having their arms relaxed to their, to their side bring your chin up just a little bit because we, we're trying to keep uh, the back of the, the neck obscured by uh, uh, actually by the, the head here. So we're going to take and uh, have the patient to uh, uh, put their arm by their side. We're going to center it is going to be up and down. Uh, it's going to be right behind the ear at the mastoid tip. As far as up and down, we're going to center it to level uh, of the C4 or the thyroid cartilage, about the uh, actually the, the lower to mid margins. And you can actually palpate the vertebral prominence at C7 and see where that level is at and sort of judge it from there. Our collimation will be to the skin margins uh, front to back and then IR borders up and down. Okay, I'm going to have to make a little bit of an adjustment. Uh, just a little bit, raise the film just a little. making sure I'm centered to the film. And you can actually use the shadow, the light and the shadow of the neck to know when you're in the center of the neck by looking at the shadow itself. As far as marker placement goes, we're going to use our left marker. We're going to place it in the light field but not obstructing any anatomy. Now as far as uh, what we're going to do is for uh, respirations, this is going to be done on expiration. And expiration because it actually helps to, uh, it allows the shoulders to go as far down as possible because we need to see uh, C1 through C7. And so we're trying to, to help with that by having them take a breath out, which will relax the shoulders down. Okay, so we're going to make our exposure here. And this is our lateral view. We're going to have the patient then to turn and put their back against the board. We're going to turn the shield to the front. We will bring the SID into 40 inches. Okay. Then we're going to angle it to uh, 15 to 20 degrees Cephalad. Okay. We're going to have the patient. We're going to try to get the occlusal plane, which is a line, an imaginary line between the uh, the chewing surface of the teeth, the mastoid tip, and the uh, back of the skull. We're trying to, to get that perpendicular to the IR, so that uh, imaginary line from here through the mastoid tip to the base of the skull, and that helps us to keep from uh, actually having uh, the obstruction uh, of some of the vertebrae. So our centering point is going to be at the lower margins of the thyroid cartilage. Our collimation again will be to the IR borders up and down, and it will be skin margins side to side. Now, I have to make a little adjustment just to film up. He's a little taller, so I have to actually adjust just to just, just the film. Okay, center that up. Marker placement uh, in the light field, but uh, not obstructing any information. And Will be in the center of the neck, and what we're looking at on the AP cervical, we're actually looking at the levels from C3 through T2. Uh, 
because of the way the, the head and the neck is there, uh, we are not going to be able to see C1 and C2. We see C1 and C2 on our Dontoid view, which we'll, we'll show you later. So the technical factors for this is going to be 77 uh, T81 KV, and this will be our AP view of the cervical. It will show our intervertebral disc spaces open, is what we're trying to see on this view. Now we're going to do, you can do actually anterior or posterior obliques. Posterior obliques is what we routinely do, although anterior obliques, uh, because of the radiation dose to the thyroid, is preferred, uh, we do tend to do the posterior obliques uh, more routinely. So we're going to actually do both obliques, so your patient will be in an RPO and an LPO position. So we're going to put the patient in an LPO position, okay, and as far as your centering, again you're going to center at the level of the thyroid cartilage. We want to take and on the front of the ear here, this is called the tragus, we want the centering line to come up and down approximately at the level of the tragus. That's going to be a good indication that the obliquity is correct and that the patient uh, is, is rotated correctly. Um, as far as centering goes, you want to make sure you're again, you're centered to your film, and we are. Uh, using the correct marker, we are actually marking the side that is closest to the IR. Uh, the patient should be oblique 45 degrees. I failed to mention that. 45 degrees for this. Now, in the LPO position, what we're looking at on this is the intervertebral foramina. And in the LPO position, you're actually seeing the side furthest away. You want to take in, uh, it's going to be about, uh, it'll, uh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke there. It's going to be uh, intervertebral foramina on the side furthest away. So the LPO will show the right intervertebral foramina. RPO, the intervertebral foramen, will be seen on the left side. So, uh, patient is on, uh, again, LPO position, technical factor 77 to 81 kV, and uh, our tube is going to be angled again about 15 degrees, cephalad, and this is our LPO position uh, for the cervical. Now we're going to demonstrate the RPO. Patient is then going to be moved oblique 45 degrees in the right uh, uh, posterior oblique. Again, we're going to center the patient. Straighten your head just a little. After the centering line is going to come up through the tragus. We're going to put our right marker in the light field, but it's not obstructing. Should come up again through the tragus at the level of uh, the thyroid cartilage there, the lower margin. The tube again is angled uh, 15 degrees. Technical factors will be uh, 77 to uh, 81, and the patient in an RPO position, this will show the uh, intervertebral foramina from the left side. Anterior obliques, are a patient in an REO position, uh, is going to be uh, seeing the actual right side, an uh, LAO position, a left anterior oblique, will show the intervertebral foramina on the left side. Now, I do want to stress the marker placement. Uh, you need to make sure that the marker, even if you used a left marker on the correct side in an RPO position, that is incorrect. So I'm trying to stress to you that in the, in the RPO position, you need to use the right marker on the right side. When the patient is in an LPO position, the left marker is on the left side. I can't stress that enough. They want the side closest to the IR to be marked. That's how our, how our radiologists like to, to see the film. And this is our cervical x-ray.